What's good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk, back with another video today. For today's video, I wanted to cover three ways on how Nike can improve upon on the Nike Jaw 1 with the Nike Jaw 2. All right, so just getting things started really quickly. If you didn't know, the Nike Jaw 1 did initially release last year in April 2023 for a retail price of $110. And what this shoe featured on the initial release and with the newer colorways that are still releasing today is a very aggressive traction pattern that performs amazing basically on any core conditions. On dirty floors, you'll have to wipe every so often. The upper of the shoe is very cheap with this mesh material and kind of like these fuse overlays running throughout the shoes. And some of the models have like a synthetic leather at the back here and a screen mesh at the back of the shoe as well. So overall, the materials are very cheap. Now, as far as cushioning goes, you're getting a very dense file on midsole and then a really skinny zoom air bag kind of running side to side in the forefoot. Again, these initially released for $110. I don't know if Nike saw the overall success of this shoe, but they did raise the price on some colorways to $120 and I believe even up to $130 for the Nike Jaw 1. So I just wanted to cover three different ways on how the brand can improve on the Nike Jaw 2. Now the first thing I did want to cover with the Nike Jaw 2s that they can improve upon compared to the ones right here is the overall cushioning system. So again, with this shoe, you are getting a very basic and dense Phylon midsole. It's very dense and really hard underfoot. It does become a little bit more fluffy with play, but overall it's not my favorite setup. In the forefoot again, you're getting a very small zoom airbag. Now where I think they can improve upon on the twos is giving us a fluffier foam compound on the heel or just Cushlon altogether here. I think Cushlon would be a way better option for more play styles and just offer a more plush feeling here at the back of the two. I think it would just offer a nice plush feeling on the back of the Nike Jaw 2 if they did want to go that route. Now in the forefoot, he is a very explosive player and I know he has played in a ton of Kobe models from the past. So I do think if they put a zoom turbo bag in the forefoot, I think a lot of people would feel like they're getting a better bang for their buck with a Cushlon midsole and a forefoot zoom turbo bag up front on the Nike Jaw 2 because this setup is just a very basic setup and quite frankly, on the Nike GT Cut Academy, the Renew Foam in the back of the shoe feels nicer than this Phylon, and the Zoom Bag is actually bigger in that shoe compared to this one right here. And that retails for $95. These retail for between 110 and 130. So I think Nike can definitely do a better job starting with that Cushlon in the heel and a Zoom Turbo Bag in the forefoot. The second place that I think Nike can improve with the Nike Jaw 2 versus this shoe right here is with the materials. Now this mesh material is super cheap and actually kind of like pretty scratchy and it does take some time to break in. And then these fuse overlays right here, again, it's just a really cheap setup. And when you guys increase the price up to 130 USD, I think you should be offering better materials on that model. Now I understand if the $110 shoe is gonna have this, but once you get to the $120 and $130 price points, which the Nike Jaw 2 will cost, I think you definitely have to offer better material. Now, a way I think the brand could do that is doing away with this really scratchy mesh and giving us something similar to what's on the Nike LeBron 20s. Obviously not quite the same, but something that's just a little bit softer and takes less time to break in. Or on the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2s, these do have a mesh underlay and then a Leno weave overlay. And again, I think both of these options would serve a better purpose on the Nike Jaw 2 versus the ones and would actually offer less break in time and more of a natural feeling on foot because this definitely takes some time to break in, especially these straps on the side where you have kind of this synthetic material that's kind of like a fuse overlay. This definitely took some time to break in. So I think if they give us a better overall material on the Nike Jaw 2 versus the ones, I would be a lot happier. But again, I understand for the $110 base model, giving a more cheap material, but kind of on the nicer colorways or some of the other models that are $120 or $130, I think the brand should be offering us a nicer material. Even something like the Nike GT Cut 3, like this shoe right here retails for $200, but it's definitely not because of the materials. These materials are still cheap, but they're implemented better 
than the Nike Jaw One. They're just softer and they take less time to break in. So even something like this with this felt or nubuck material, I think Nike can definitely improve on the Nike Jaw Two with the materials. And then last but not least, the last thing I think the brand can improve upon is the price point because this was the original colorway, the sketch colorway in blue. These retailed for $110 in the US, $145 here in Canada. Now through the year with this shoe being out, they did raise the price. Now I believe this one right here, the Christmas colorway, released around Christmas time there in 2023. And these retailed for 170 Canadian and 120 or 130 USD. And honestly, you're getting the same materials, the same tech. There's nothing improved upon on the model, but the brand has raised the price. And that really annoys me because I just think that Nike saw the success of the model and how the early colorways were selling. And they felt like they could get away with raising the price. Now I understand everything with inflation is becoming more expensive, but for a brand that's worth billions of dollars, nickeling and diming us customers for another $10 or $20 just doesn't sit right. Considering there's a ton of shoes out on the market that you can buy that have far better materials, cushioning, support, you name it, at a cheaper price point. So I definitely think for the brand's sake, I think it would be great if they kept that $110 price point. I don't remember if the Nike PG line was ever more expensive than the initial 110 that it retailed at on the first model all the way up to the sixes. Sound so off in the comments if that model ever increased in price. I don't believe it did, but already with the Nike Jaw 1, we're seeing a price increase. And that brings me to the Nike Jaw 2 in general as far as release. Now, as far as online goes on Nike Talk and a few other websites, I believe it was Soul Retriever, they are saying the shoe will debut in December of 2024 for a retail price of $110 for the base models and then the special makeups are going to be up to $120 or $130. So again, we are seeing that price increase on the twos as we saw on the ones. So sound off in the comments what you guys think as far as the price point and where you would like to see the brand improve upon on the Nike Jaw 1 with the Nike Jaw 2. Overall though, this was a good performer. It just took some time to break in as far as materials go. And if we're talking about competitors out there, I do think Adidas is absolutely killing it. So, so far the Adidas AE1 has really stuck at that $120 price point. And what you're getting in this shoe right here is far greater than the Nike Jaw 1 as far as bang for your buck. You're getting amazing traction on the AE1, a full length jet boost, midsole as far as the cushioning goes which absolutely destroys what you're getting in the nike jaw one and the overall aesthetics of the shoe in my opinion is the best looking debut signature shoe in a very long time and my favorite signature shoe out right now with the ae1 from adidas so bar none this shoe right here as far as performance package what you're getting for 120 dollars is far greater than what you're getting from Nike here on the Jaw 1. But that's gonna do it for today's video on three ways where I think Nike can improve upon on the Nike Jaw Morant signature shoe line. We are gonna be waiting another seven or eight months until we get a release date, probably at least another couple months until we see some leaked photos. But overall, I did enjoy the Nike Jaw 1. I just want more from the brand as far as the cushioning, materials and just a price point that sticks across the board and doesn't change from release to release but as always if you guys could like comment and subscribe that does help the channel a ton and check out my instagram over at sneaker tech talk as it is an extension of my youtube channel with all my pickups basketball footage and nostalgia as a whole as always thanks for watching today's video and until next time peace